Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today's video is my mini me. I finally got around to making one. In addition to it being my first time doing a skin tone change, I ran into a couple of issues along the way. And it was also my first time making a doll that was meant to look like something specific. It was a challenge, but if you'd like to watch me stumble my way through this process, then just keep watching. I got a pretty significant head start on rerouting her. It has been a fairly lengthy process. So I have a split color with a turquoise blue on the bottom. And for that, I used Karen Simply Soft yarn in the color Pagoda. Unfortunately, there wasn't a matching shade of brown, so I ended up mixing the black and chocolate shades together half and half. In hindsight, I probably should have done 75% black to 25% chocolate, as I think that would have gotten me a shade closer to my actual hair color, but it's close enough. After cutting the yarn to length, I worked in sections, taking roughly seven strands of each shade at a time, brushing those out with a cat brush, and doing my best to really blend those two colors together. Once I have the yarn brushed out, I section off a small piece, pick that up on the end of my rerouting tool, and plug that into the head. And with the magic of editing, we are done. She has got a very unruly Hermione look going on. But before I work on taming her hair, I am going to use Fabri-Tac glue to secure the plugs from the inside. I do my very best to make sure the glue touches all of the plugs inside. And then I will set this aside to dry for 24 hours. Off camera, I boil washed her hair and brushed it out. That helped cut down on some of the bulk. And now it is time to burrito the hair. I should have done this before I rerouted her hair, but Posia had spiky coral pieces on her ears. With an X-Acto blade, I cut them down and then filed them with my Dremel. They are far from perfect, but the hair is going to be covering them anyway, so I probably could have left them as is. Now I'm ready to get started on her face. Taking 100% acetone on a Q-tip, I'm going to remove her factory paint. I'm now ready to prep the face with two layers of Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes in between each spray and an additional 30 minutes before beginning her face up. And as always, please be sure to read the manufacturer's safety instructions before using any of the materials mentioned in this video. I'm going to try to match her skin tone to Cleo's, and if all else fails, I will be using Cleo's head as well. I'm going to start trying to do a skin tone change with pastels and see how that goes. Ugh, sorry, I just realized I wasn't filming. I have applied my first layer of pastels. It is looking really patchy. I don't know if this is normal at this stage of the process or not. I'm hoping as I go along the coverage will even itself out, but uh, we shall see. I'm going to seal this first layer with a coat of MSC and I will be back for layer number two. I'm also going to do at least one layer of burnt sienna to help combat the blue. With a fluffy brush, I go in to dust off the excess powder. Okay, I am back and I've encountered a few fun disasters. The first of which is midway through doing the skin tone change on the face, I realized I should have reconnected the head prior to doing the layers of pastels and MSC because MSC can crack, especially the more layers you add. I realized before I added any more layers, I needed to connect the body with the head. And of course, I broke the neck peg. 
I did heat the head with a hair dryer prior to removal. I don't know if this is an issue with this generation or just this doll in particular, but I found it very difficult to remove Cleo's head. So I need to fix the situation. I do have a drill attachment for my Dremel. I am going to use this to drill a new hole through the front of the neck. And my plan as of right now is to use a piece of this paper clip to act as the neck peg. So we'll see how it goes. But first step is drilling the hole. All right, now I'm going to see if the hole is big enough for the paper clip and it is, so that's good. Now I need to cut this to size. So now I need to get the neck peg back in there. I'm going to stick this through and super glue it into place. Add a little bit of super glue to the front as well. I'm not worried about the way this looks because the head will cover this up. I'm going to get this head back on before I do any additional layers. Jumping back over to the skin tone change. I started with one layer of the burnt sienna tint followed by two layers of burnt sienna and two additional layers of the burnt sienna tint, sealing each layer with a coat of MSC. Five layers got me to a place I'm pretty happy with and I'm hoping that this will be a sufficient base to build on. The undertone is definitely a bit off, but I think I can fix that with the blushing. While I love my pastels from Amazon, when it comes to skin tone changes, I really don't think you can beat the pigmentation of pan pastels. I had some issues with the face. I'm not 100% sure what happened, but I suspect that the MSC is to blame. It has the tendency to darken pastels. With each layer of MSC I was applying, it was causing the face to darken in strange areas, one of which was the top lip and the tip of the nose. It didn't seem to matter how many layers of pastels I put over the top of it to try and cover it up. The darkness just kept showing through and her face was also starting to look really textured. It was a tough choice, but ultimately I decided it would be best to wipe the face and start over. The second time around, I layered the pastels the same way with three layers of the burnt sienna tint, two layers of burnt sienna, spraying a coat of MSC in between each layer. The only thing I did differently is the second time around, instead of sealing the pastels with three layers of MSC, I only sealed it with one. That may be taking a risk, but I really want to minimize the amount of MSC I use. I am finally ready to begin the face up and I have a picture of myself pulled up to use as reference. Starting off with Burnt Sienna by Karen Dash. It's their super color soft. I'm going to begin sketching in the eye shape. Taking a damp micro Q-tip, I'm just going to bring this back a little bit. Got a little too high on this side. Now that I've roughly sketched in the outline, I'm just going to take my white watercolor pencil and fill in the eyes. I feel like this step really helps me gauge how far off I am on the symmetry. I am going to take just a little bit of my white pan pastel and I'm going to put that on the high points of her face or any features I want to bring forward. Oh, 
Okay, off camera, I have added one more layer of the white pencils to the eyes, and I am ready to start drawing in the irises. I'm going to insert a couple pictures of my eyes close up. I have hazel eyes. From a distance, they look like a light brown, but up close, there's some other colors visible like greens and an orangey brown. I'm going to aim for the close up view of the eye. I am going to start with Leaf Green by Derwent to sketch in the general shape of the iris. Taking umber, I am going to do the dreaded nostril darkening. I am also going to fill in the iris with leaf green. Okay, I am now going to seal this with another coat of MSC. I'm going to work on the irises, beginning by darkening the outer edges. From there, I just work on adding in the details. I'm going to add a little bit of color to the lips with pink purple and cold pink pastels. To tone down the pink, I'm going to put some salmon orange over the top of that and also use dark sienna for shading. Just a quick update, it is extremely cold outside and I am really struggling with the MSC. I don't have that gritty, grippy surface that I normally have to work on and that is despite the fact that I'm letting her dry inside. I sprayed another layer and I'm going to just keep working at it and hope I'm able to build. Taking some of dark sienna and also some of dark red brown anywhere I need extra depth, I am going to start shading around the eyes. Taking some of this mica powder in cream white, I am going to put that on the high points of the face. With the black pastel, I am going to create the lash shadow by shading the top of the eye. With my umber pencil, I begin flicking hairs into the brows. 
Switching to Derwent Chinese ink, I add some darker hairs as well. All right, I have got to get back to working on these eyes. So I am going to continue layering and building up the pencils. Before I seal this layer, I am going to add in all of my beauty marks. I think it's going to help the skin look more realistic. That's my hope anyway. I have done some back and forth layering the MSC and pencils on the eyes. I think I've finally got them to a place I'm slightly happier with. I still think it looks a little bit heavy, but the temperatures are not getting warmer anytime soon. So I'm just gonna work with what I have. Typically, I feel like eye shines really help bring the look together, and I'm hoping this time will be no exception. I'm going to use a dotting tool and a bit of white acrylic paint to add those in. After sealing in my work with two final layers of MSC, I am ready to remove the burrito wrap. Okay, I am back. I just quickly curled her hair off camera and surprisingly enough, that actually was quick. It was my first time curling doll hair and what I used was this metal straw. I imagine it would take quite a bit longer if you were going for tighter curls, but I would say the whole process took me maybe 30 minutes. It was a lot quicker than I expected. I put my flat iron on its highest heat setting, clamped it all around the bottom of the straw, heating it up for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. Each time I heated it up, I was able to get about two curls. And then I popped on some false eyelashes. I wouldn't say that she looks all that much like me, but I am proud of how different she looks from where we started. I am happy with how her skin turned out, especially because it was my first time doing a skin tone change. And then all of the clothing came off of Etsy with the exception of these Monster High boots. She also has some earrings. I personally like asymmetry, so I gave her different earrings. This was a bit of a short and sweet video, but the next project is going to be a big one and I cannot wait to dive in. If you would like to be notified when I upload videos in the future, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That is all from me today. I really hope you had an amazing holiday season and until next time, take care. <laughs> and, pinch my finger. Okay, this is all going to plan.